I'm Dominic, I got a bachelor's degree in video production and multimedia, but I can't do anything with it right now because everything's shut down, can't find a job. Ah! I'm Lena, I am just the horror movie lover. Horror movie expert. Hopefully you're still stuck inside when you're watching this because <laughs> then the name will still be relevant. If not, I hope you enjoy it. We got a great movie to review today. A Dutch film from Amsterdam called Amsterdam! Overall first impression, I felt like going into this film, we had like below the bar really expectations. Low, like, for like so low. I mean, a title like Amsterdam. Amsterdamed. It doesn't sound good. And being an 80s film, you would just- Yeah, like 1980s, sense. we're like, okay, foreign, badly titled 80s film. What could go right? <laughs> Honestly. Boy, were we surprised. Possibly the best film I've watched all of 2020. 2020. So let's dive on let's in. Let's dive on in. <laughs> <laughs> Creatures in costume. So right off the bat, you notice it's an 80s film. They're all in 80s garb. They're in a European country. So they're all in cool leather jackets. Yeah. And they look like 90s X-Men characters in their like yellow trench coats yeah. and brightly colored swimsuits. How'd you feel about the costumes? <laughs> Honestly, the costuming, there's nothing crazy because this isn't a creature feature or anything of that right. sort. So there's nothing to really talk about that wise. It's more of like actual clothes that they're wearing. And all the clothes look really cool. There's actually a couple outfits that we wanted to cop right off the bat. Right, so in the beginning, right off the bat, there was uh, this prostitute who was wearing a super elaborate outfit to the point where I thought she was gonna be the main character. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. all right, there's the main girl. I'm already rooting for her. She's on, what's the word they use today? She uh, Fleek is Fleek? like outdated, I feel. Point? Point, point on point. point Leave a comment down below. What do you say when you're wearing a good outfit? On fleek, on point. You've got the. She's got the drip. That's she's, what the kids say. She's got the drip. She had that drip and about to be even more dripping because she dies right she off dies. the bat. First kill. And also the main villain. Really cool. I mean, it's just a dive outfit, but they managed to make it look really interesting. Yeah. I thought. There's just a lot of diving outfits because it is a movie that has to do with diving. The killer is a scuba diver if you haven't caught that already. That good old 80s, 90s dive gear can't beat it. Story and plot. The story wasn't anything new. Except what made the story new was its location. Yes, the lo the location and the twist of the story. Right. Or what really solidified it. Because the story kind of leads you to believe one thing and then it's like, no, it, it caught us off guard because we were like, predictable story, predictable bad guy. Yeah, yeah we knew this was going to be this bad. And then there's a twist and it's so good. I really liked it. The location obviously was the most interesting thing. Like mm -hmm. it's Amsterdam, there's a lot of canals. The bad guy is using the canals to sneak around and kill people. Yeah. And I thought that was unique in its own. The story itself is more about like the cop investigation of the murders than so much like there's a group of teens and they're being hunted by the Amsterdam killer. Yeah, it's a slasher flick. Technically. Yeah, but it's more of like a cop investigation Yeah, slasher. it doesn't follow the exact Recipe. like. Yeah, I don't know. The twists and turns were very, very good for it. Very, right. very good. Standard cop investigation. Someone's murdering people in a very unique slasher killer way. And there's a lot of boat chases and motorcycle chases. And we'll get into that because those, yes. those were very good. Those are very good. Characters. So our main character is a detective that you follow. He's kind of your typical like bad boy, doesn't follow the you know exact road that you're supposed to. Very flirty, right. Casanova. That's, that's it. it. That's and that's it. all the all the characters are super super one dimensional. Mm -hmm. You've got bad boy dad, bad dad, bad, bad boy dad. bad dad, bad dad. You have irrelevant children. Yeah, irrelevant children. You have rival cop that thinks he's the cool guy. The very, love interest. Very easy to get love interest. Yep. Although she, her, her one other dimension she has is instead of being a damsel, there is a part where she like beats the crap out of someone. Yeah, yeah. And that was like, oh, she actually figured out what was going on and like didn't get captured. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. But other than that, character is super one dimensional, except maybe the, the villain who, I mean, isn't complex, but has a good enough story. But 
Even though the characters were one-dimensional, I felt like that didn't ruin the viewing experience. You were still interested enough to carry on, even though the characters didn't really have anything worthwhile, <laughs> to be honest. That's probably one of my biggest gripes would be there's no character development. Yeah, no character development. And there's some, and, and a lot of the characters are pointless. Like they didn't mm -hmm. need them, didn't need the kids, honestly didn't need the rival cop didn't because rival once cop. he's gone, no one cares. No one cares. So there's no like punishment for characters dying. But the way the movie's structured overall just keeps it interesting. Mm -hmm. Obviously all the actors are Dutch. And so the movie's original language isn't English. But what it sounds like is that the actors themselves did their own English dubbing. So the voices match, but not quite. And it's a little off, but it's they did what they could. Yeah, we're, we're not exactly sure. Don't quote on it being the actual people. But yeah, the dubbing is a little strange, but understandable 80s. Yeah, and it's not so bad that you don't look past it. You definitely look past it. You're like... Okay. Yeah. Because okay. okay. some of the people speaking English, no accent at all. And then some of them are like, that's definitely that actor's voice, but their words aren't matching what their lips are saying. Cinematography and editing. The movie starts off feeling like a very dark 80s slasher. It opens with this really cool POV of the scuba diver, like, swimming through the canals and he's like checking people out. He's trying to choose a target. You see some people fighting in the street. You see like a helpless girl. And you're like, oh, who's he gonna get? Yeah. And it's it's got the title going. It's got this really good music. And then it pans through a Chinese restaurant and they're speaking in Chinese and there's no subtitles. And you're like, okay, what's gonna happen in the Chinese restaurant? And nothing. then nothing, nothing happens. happens. So that was really weird. This movie had weird inserts of Asian people in it. Like there's another scene where they're in a museum and there's like a tour group of just Asian people and they're like a comic relief. And I don't know what kind of weird European 80s racism this is or or what. So out of place because you think it's going to go somewhere and it doesn't. But the movie starts with this really dark slasher tone and then it ends almost as an 80s sitcom. It, yeah, it goes from ooh. Wow, like, cause it does bring you in. Like that opening shot yeah. really does kind of keep you interested and you're like, okay, like what's going on? At that point, you also don't realize it's technically a diver. Yeah. You don't really know whose eyes you're looking through. But uh, I mean, the, t the tone just doesn't, it shifts. It shifts. Yeah, the sure. tone shifts. And I felt like that didn't impede too much because it is an 80s film. Mm -hmm. So we were expecting the whole thing to be super cheesy. Yeah. And it just kind of went from this gradient of like dark to, to sitcom. There were a lot of scenes obviously in the movie that were edited in that were like, this wasn't needed. Like there's a weird comedic scene where these policemen are patrolling on a boat mm -hmm. and they hear a noise and it's a duck and they shoot it and then that's it. So like that scene didn't yeah. need to be in. There's a lot of scenes yeah. that could have been cut down, especially because the movie is like a two hour movie, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's long. You did like how they did cut some of the transitioning. Yeah, so there's a lot of good, I mean, the pacing itself was good, except for those unnecessary scenes, which there was at least three or four like really long unnecessary scenes. But there were some cool match cuts they were talking about like, oh, the people are dying or people are gonna be they dead. In the morgue. And, and they were in the morgue. And then it, it cuts to him squirting ketchup. And there was um, a couple other fun match cuts. A lot of the cinematography with the kills were cool. One of the first body reveals is he throws the body over a bridge mm -hmm. and it's hanging and this tour boat goes under it and the body is dragged across the top of the glass ceiling. So all the blood's like going across and the tour boat's full of so, kids. Yeah. It, and they're all screaming and... And then she, her body just stops because there's the middle opening. So oh, it's it like falls hanging, through. Yeah, 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 yeah. from the middle. And it's it's a really great way to start it out. It's really like, that. that's what really drew me in that first kill. I was like, okay, I'm invested. It was, it was the opening sequence and then the first kill where he's just like stabbing her in an alleyway, which was like super real feeling. And then that, and then that was like, and that's all within like the first, like maybe 10, 15 mm -hmm. minutes of the movie. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, I'm hooked. And then the movie slowly turns into an action sitcom, which isn't the worst thing, but it didn't need to do that. Yeah. Definitely could use a remake, I feel. I would love to see this film remade. It'd be great, especially with some of the like- Updated. And like practical effects that yeah. can be done today. Gore! Yeah, as we were saying, the gore factor in this film, mostly just realistic. Throat slit, stab wounds. Yeah, nothing like, nobody's like pulled apart, nobody's like cut up, mutilated. Yeah. Honestly, the goriest thing is that bloody body hanging. Mm -hmm. And that's 
that's it. Yeah, so, it, it, it goes with the film. So yeah, gore, good, good, realistic. Good. Oh, realistic by 1980s uh, low-budget practical effects standards. Yeah. Music and sound. Obviously, we really love the music in this. Yes, the music was very so, good. Very dated 80s sounding, but obviously 80s film, 80s music makes sense. I'm a sucker for synth. The so. synth was so, like, every time that came on, I was like... It gets you going. Like I said at the beginning with that opening POV shot, you hear like the breathing of mm -hmm. his respirator and it just sets the tone. And then the ending song. The ending song. It's so damn, damn, so damn. Oh. It's great. This is Amsterdam. <laughs> it ends with this upbeat song. That's like, it, it ends like an 80s sitcom. It's upbeat, but the lyrics aren't. Yeah, upbeat. it's like, you're gonna All we can say is it's been probably around two weeks-ish going on yeah, since we've seen it, and that song has been very prevalent still. So soundtrack, good. Villain. Villain. Scuba diver swimming through the canals, killing people. I like the concept. The way the story structured is you really don't know who it is. At first you're like, this guy seems like the killer, but then they kind of point it to another person. You're like, okay. But then it kind of gets pointed back to the guy you originally think, and it, and it would make sense why he would want to. Like, right. They kind of give you little tidbits, obviously like the red herring, like throw it in there. And, and then, there's some foreshadowing that I didn't see. Like it, earlier in the film, there's these people who are trying to test the water because uh, a chemical plant's dumping waste. And I thought this was just like, oh, silly environmentalists are going to be mm -hmm. killed because it's an 80s film. But that actually has something to do with the, yeah. the villain's motives. Because even both of us had like predictable villain yeah. written down. And yeah. then 10 minutes later, we had to scratch that out because yeah. they, they tricked us. You don't build any type of likeness for him like you do for like Jason or Freddy or Michael Myers. You're definitely not like, I love the Amsterdam diver. <laughs> Who's un... I don't even remember his name. I, I think to just be the honest. diver. Yeah. So going into the motives, because motives are what makes a villain. Basically, he was a diver, I believe, working for the government of some sort, and they sent him out to do something, and basically he was affected by toxic waste that completely like messed his brain up, yeah. messed his face up. Disfigured him. You literally were like, he looked Palpatine. like Palpatine. Yeah. We've been watching a lot of Star Wars too. Basically, his motives were just to get back at society, which we felt was a little like, okay. Yeah, and I wanted him to have more of a motive, like, because at first they kind of lead it to believe that he has a specific target. We're like, okay, this is a little interesting. And then it was just kind of like, he's just killing at random to get back at the world. And it was like, I know he's crazy because of toxic waste, yeah. but I felt like he still could have been going after like government officials. Politicians. Or something. Yeah, because the way they also kind of lead you in the movie is like the first person to die, she is, you know, she's a hooker. That's her occupation. Kills her, and you know, it's very stereotypical 80s if you're, you know, prominent and promiscuous or sex life or anything right. of that sort, usually killed. Then one of the other people is somebody who is basically posing as somebody of a religious background to get money. Right. So and is actually taking the money. So they almost lead you to believe like they're killing sinners. Yeah, that there there's a certain pattern and then that just completely went out the window. Well what was weird is before you see the hooker be killed, she's like having advances towards her by this really grody cab driver. And I was like, okay, he's gonna get it. Yeah. And then he does it and that was kind of disappointing to me because I was like this guy didn't get what he deserved and then they like interview him later. And he's like, oh, she made advances towards me and I threw her out. And even the cops are kind of like, that's a lie. That's a lie. But we're not going to do anything about this yeah. guy. And he never gets what he deserves. That was something that was kind of disappointing. I wanted that guy to get it. So. Yeah, definitely. His name in the credits is just Maniac. He has no name. Huh? Villain in the credit, Maniac, like, no the name. Like, plays himself. It says Maniac as himself. <laughs> they just cast an actual Maniac. maniac. <laughs> Titty! <laughs> The titty in this movie was moderate for what an 80s film Minimal was. Titty. You get one titty in the morgue. You get a little sexual tension with mm -hmm. the, the main cop and his new love interest. Which also, the cop goes to interview oh. at the scuba diving club. Yeah, with 1,400 scuba diving members. And the first diver that he kind of comes out the water happens to be a hot babe. And, and he's just like, I'm going to need to interrogate you over dinner. Not professional? <laughs> like, at all? This man is Right not, away. He's not good. 
He's yeah. not good. He's not a good dad. He's not a good cop. Well, I guess he's kind of. He, a good cop. Well, no, he was said to be the best, and there's a whole thing in the movie where they like want to replace him for the case because they're like, he's not finding yeah. this killer, and we need this killer found by tomorrow. And they're like, I'm not replacing him because he's the best, and he's the only one who can find him, which is kind of true. He's the only one that suspects that they like caught the wrong guy. Too. Yeah. So I mean, he's a good cop, but also not. He's not an ethical cop. On the scene, hot babe. That's his target. And then she's like way too easy too. She's just like, okay, I'll go on dinner, but hold on, I gotta go out to this opera with my friend. And oh, if you wanna find me, just stalk me with your police scanners and your police records. Yeah, a little uncomfortable is that he literally uses his like cop powers to find her address, her phone number, where she worked, and she's okay with all of yeah, this. Yeah, well, she like asks for it too, which is like kind of not. I didn't like that dynamic. No. no it, was, it was a little uncomfortable. No. And then obviously, all this tension finally builds up to like a really short sex scene yeah. but definitely an 80s style sex scene it's like there they're doing it and then it pans to the window and it's done so titty was there yeah a little titty little that uh moderate titty the wrap-up basically the wrap-up in conclusion what i, I liked this movie <laughs> but well we both came out of this film going wow I loved that 100% more than I thought I was going to yep. because my expectations for it were That's all the way so down here. Low. What would you think could, they could improve on? Definitely what I think they could improve on, take out all the unnecessary scenes and maybe develop the characters a bit more. Yeah, develop the characters or take them out. And also maybe a more consistent tone, tone down the comedy a little bit, amp up the, the dark 80s slasher a little more. Favorite scenes? Favorite scenes. What there, was, there was a lot of good ones. There's a lot of good ones. There is a very long boat chase, which is super impressive super because- Super coordinated. Super coordinated, really big stunts. I mean, they really did film this in Amsterdam, like through the canal, so that was really impressive. There's also a motorcycle chase scene, which that's is also, also cool. so it's like, it's almost an action movie too. Yeah. The body at the beginning that's going across the tour boat is the best. Definitely a fame for both of us. Pulls you in. And then there's this one kill where it's this lady. Coochie cut. Oh yeah, that, I guess tying into some of the, the titty, the sex was this girl's got her legs kind of spread. She's sitting in a, a floaty a floaty that's got a clear bottom and you see the maniac's face rise up out of the water and then a knife go up between her legs. Oh my God. Very well shot. And then just a scream as he literally goes whoosh, and you like, she's gone. Coochie cut. Coochie cut. cut. There's a ridiculous scene where for some reason the killer's just pulling a boat by the rope. Oh yeah, water. yeah, yeah. And then like, that's also the sailor that's on the boat. He's like kind of drunk and stuff. And he comes out and he's just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Another favorite scene was they go to investigate that because that boat later sinks, he kills the guy. So the rival cop character goes to investigate the scene and you're like, okay, they're gonna find the dead body. They're gonna be like, we still, he's still on the loose, blah, blah, blah. And he's there, Fucking broad daylight underwater, just bursts out, the out the closet, stabs this character who we thought was a main character. No one ends up caring about this character dies. And then they like go on this whole chase scene and then they think they catch him and then they don't. That was a really well done scene. Yeah, very like, when we say there's a lot of twists, that was one of them that Big really were like, oh shit. Twists, like, action. I can't really say the comedy was good at all. None no. of the comedy was good, but everything else. But it, it, overall it's enjoyable. Definitely. Would I recommend? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I, I almost want to say you need to put this on your list. You need you need to see this movie. Not the best, but for what you think it's gonna be, it over exceeds expectations. Yep. So we found out some extra little information. Little information. Supposedly a lot of the unnecessary scenes that we did and not like and characters really like the kid this, all the scenes with the kids the scene with the the boat and the patrol cops a lot of that stuff actually got cut for the made for tv version. yeah the made for tv version apparently i guess um some of the other stuff that we did like like the coochie cut, cut down a bit the whole scene where they find the oxygen tank and i really liked that scene the scene mm -hmm. where they found the oxygen tank where they think they caught the killer. They cut that out too. But overall, they did cut the movie down for the TV version. So if you can find that. That'll probably be more in line with taking away almost all of our complaints. Yeah. Also, I guess apparently there's a version of the film that cut out the demise of the killer. The killer's ending, spoiler, Big spoiler, obviously. Big spoiler. The, the killer, after he's like found out, goes back to his little hut 
and just shoots himself in the head with a harpoon gun, spear gun, which is super brutal. That's probably one of the most violent things in the film because they yeah. do show it like he takes off his mask, looks at a picture of his friend, sits down and bam, and then the police show up. And then it cuts from this dark dreary scene to the, the fun sitcom of the cop and his love interest just like paddle, paddle boating, playing around in Amsterdam, Amsterdam, ooh, ooh. But yeah, if you can find those versions, we obviously watched what, it was only released in 2009, the uncut version. It wasn't until 2009 that the full movie was released. That's it for this quarantine That's cut? That's it for this quarantine cut. Stay tuned for the next. Will you be out of quarantine? Will the title be irrelevant? Will we change the name? Who knows? But until then, don't fall in the canal and get Amsterdam. Good night.